Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It's a client-server protocol that automatically provides a host with its IP address and other related configuration information, like its subnet mask and default gateway. The DHCP clients obtain their IP configuration information from the server rather than being manually configured. So this can save you a lot of legwork. If you look on my PC here, Let's look at how to manually configure an IP address. This is on a Windows host. So in control panel, I'll go to the network settings. I'll find my network card, go to the properties, and then the internet protocol version 4, so the IPv4 properties. And in here, I can see that it's selected to obtain an IP address automatically. That means that my laptop is currently a DHCP client. If I wanted to manually set an IP address on here, I could choose the other radio button to use the following IP address and manually type in an IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server. But I don't want to do that. I want it to automatically receive it from the DHCP server. So I will just cancel out of here. How DHCP works is the client sends a DHCP discover message, which is broadcast traffic. The DHCP server will then reply back with a DHCP offer, but it's not completed yet. The client will then reply back with a DHCP request. And then finally, the DHCP server sends a DHCP acknowledgement. At that client, at that point, the client will have its IP information information like IP address, etc. So the benefits that we get from using DHCP, well, I just showed you there a minute ago about how we can manually configure an IP address. Imagine if you worked in a large campus where you had 5,000 hosts there. It would obviously be super inconvenient to physically walk around all 5,000 hosts and manually configure them with an IP address. Also, if you did that, it's very likely on some of them, you would accidentally make a misconfiguration like a typo or accidentally enter some duplicate IP addresses. But using a DHCP server, that gives you centralized and automated IP configuration in that one central location. And you know that you're not gonna have any mistakes happening. Much easier than manually assigning an IP address to all your individual hosts. You can also add additional IP configuration values by using DHCP options. For example, if you're using IP phones in your office, they need to learn where their server is. That's their TFTP server. Well, you can give them that information using DHCP. It gives efficient handling of clients that must be updated frequently, such as laptops that move to different locations on a wireless network. In your campus, different physical areas of the network are going to have different IP subnets and different VLANs. It would be really inconvenient if you had to manually change the IP address on your laptop every time you move to a different location in the network. By using DHCP, the laptop will automatically be updated with a correct IP address. And lastly, the forwarding of initial DHCP messages by using a DHCP relay agent eliminates the need for a DHCP server on every subnet. So in a large campus where you do have multiple subnets, you don't need to put a DHCP server on every single one. You'll have one centralized DHCP server, maybe two for redundancy, and they will have different scopes for the different subnets. And whenever a client comes online, it will automatically be given an IP address for the correct subnet. You'll see how that works later on in this section. 
So we mentioned earlier that you have all of those benefits of it being more convenient using a DHCP server. It also stops you from accidentally putting in a typo or configuring duplicate IP addresses. The kinds of clients that will be DHCP clients. Well, desktop PCs and laptops are good candidates to be DHCP clients because typically you're going to have a lot of those in the office. You don't want to have to manually go and configure them all. Using DHCP saves you having to do that. And your normal desktop PC, it will make outgoing connections to the internet and to other internal hosts, other internal servers in your network, but it's not going to be taking direct incoming connections. You're not running any services on there, so you're never going to have somebody outside it directly connecting to that host. So it doesn't need to have a fixed IP address. It doesn't matter if the IP addresses changes over time. And that can happen with DHCP. Your servers and network infrastructure devices, on the other hand, like your routers, your switches, and your firewalls, are not good candidates to be DHCP clients. They're mission critical devices that are required for the running of the network and for its services to function. Their IP addresses are going to be fixed. They have to stay the same because they're going to be accepting incoming connections. So you're going to manually configure them to make sure that they never change. And also you don't want them to be reliant on the DHCP server to be up and running. Okay, so that was an introduction to DHCP. In the next lecture, we'll start talking about what our different options are to actually implement this. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.